welcome to this Agilent Technologies recorded webcast. We hope you find this webcast both interesting and valuable. If after viewing this recording you are interested in more, go to Agilent TM webcast YouTube channel for more recordings or sign up for one of our upcoming live sessions at www.agilent.com slash find slash web underscore seminars. Now, over to the presenter. I would like to thank you all very much uh, for joining this event. Uh, I would like to introduce to you the topic of uh, fast and accurate uh, multiport IL and PDL testing. And um, I would like to cover in uh, today's talk, uh, first a brief introduction um, about the industry, industry drivers, what makes the industry move uh, in these days. And uh, at the same time, uh, the uh, requirements uh, for test equipment. Uh, they are uh, moving and changing as well. Um, this leads us to the topic of uh, then polarization dependent loss PDL and uh, we will discuss uh, the importance of that as well as measurement methods and Agilent's uh, test solution for that topic. Uh, we will look at the measurement results for specific components and uh, uh, at the end uh, I will provide a summary. Looking at uh, uh, today's industry, uh, telecommunication industry, uh, we see that uh, over the past decades uh, there has been a dramatic change in this uh, industry. We see that um, the, the pace of the change is really increasing. Uh, there are lots of things happening and um, uh, what in particular is impressive, for example, is the growth of the traffic uh, in the Internet. Uh, today, uh, YouTube generates as much traffic as the whole industry demanded in the year 2000. And um, one uh, additional uh, interesting data point is that a very important uh, uh, driver for bandwidth um, in these days is also the financial community. So for example, the New York Stock Exchange is uh, one of the first customers really driving and asking for 100 gigabit per second uh, connections. Uh, this along with uh, the demand in, at everybody's home for uh, uh, high definition TV for mobile services and so on uh, drives really the traffic uh, demand and therefore also causes uh, a significant evolution of the network and the uh, fundamental uh, directions of this uh, evolution that is really um, uh, can be uh, summarized in three main categories. One category is uh, the capacity speed um, needs to increase all the time. Right now we look at uh, 40 and 100 gigabit per second uh, solutions and uh, that is uh, going to be implemented in combination with advanced and complex modulation techniques. This has as a consequence of course uh, that um, you are running tighter against the margins, so the margins get smaller, uh, you are closer to the physical limitations of the network of the fiber. And um, the next uh, fundament fundamental direction, and that is um, that you would like to have more flexibility, you would like to uh, provide, um, a d you would like to uh, provide capacity on demand and uh, this drives uh, the topic of switching in the optical domain. So um, uh, components like rodents or tunable transponders get uh, of increased importance and uh, they are moving into the networks today already. Um, this uh, photonic switching has as a very important consequence that the optical length of the uh, transmission link is going to be increased so you have longer links and more uh, components are adding up in their characteristics. And uh, the third uh, fundamental direction we see in the networks is uh, um, cost reduction. Reduce costs wherever possible. That means uh, um, the level of integration of course is going up. You try to, to integrate the photonic components, that's one direction, but but um, another important point is really um, one of the key uh, uh, drivers for cost in networks is power consumption. And um, therefore, having 
power efficient uh, electronics and, and, and systems is also of very high importance. These are now uh, the uh, fundamental directions, but the question is what does that mean for the test and measurement uh, industry? And uh, of course, first of all, um, the cost of test has to be reduced. Uh, this is very important, and um, uh, this is su supported by test automation. Uh, so the test needs to be automated um, so that uh, the throughput can be increased and uh, automation uh, then again uh, requires uh, certain uh, instrument properties. For example, we need certain interfaces on the instruments. Uh, a local area network connection is important in these days. If you have local area networks, then in many cases uh, you don't need a GUI anymore. Uh, of course, small footprint is uh, also highly desired, and um, I already talked about the speed requirement, which is more or less identical to throughput. Edgeland addresses these requirements with a new series of optical test instruments, and we will talk about some of these instruments uh, during, during this uh, session. We started uh, discussing PDL, and um, what is PDL and why is it important? First of all, uh, PDL is called polarization dependent loss. And um, you can imagine that is um, when you uh, couple a signal into a fiber, um, then the signal travels down the fiber or travels down the component. And um, in, in case you couple in one polarization, for example, the color polarization which is indicated with red color here, um, you may have one type of uh, attenuation constant, and uh, if you couple in an, another polarization, which is indicated here with a blue-green color, uh, then you may have another type of uh, attenuation. That means, depending on how the signal travels down the fiber, you may have more or less loss on the link uh, at the end. Um, or briefly in summary, different loss of the traveling signal for different launching polarizations, that is PDL. Um, so networks, as we discussed before, uh, consist in these days of many fibers, many components, and uh, with uh, photonic switching and so on, uh, these are combined. And, and so you have many sources of PDL uh, combined uh, along a fiber optic link. If the polarization changes, along the link, so in between these uh, PDL sources, um, then uh, you get the effect that these PDL contributors, they add up in a statistical way. That means some of them may really add up and, and some of them may cancel out. And um, this means that uh, at the receiver side, you have to expect significant power variations uh, upon polarization changes. Um, variations of uh, several dB are currently observed in networks, and uh, that means that at the receiver, uh, the, uh, the power level moves up or down by several dB, and uh, therefore the uh, uh, power margins have to be budgeted accordingly, and uh, also the uh, decision threshold of the receiver has to be able to track these uh, changes, for example. Uh, and, and these are severe issues uh, when you're getting closer to the physical limitations uh, of the transmission, as we discussed before. So PDL is important. And uh, now we have the question, uh, how do we test PDL? And there are a number of methods in the industry established. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, some of these methods. And there's in particular uh, one method which has been used for a very long time and which is still being used in, in some cases, and that is the so-called oral states method or the polarization scanning method. In that case, um, you have an optical source, uh, a laser, for example, and that source is uh, guided uh, through a polarization scrambler. So the scrambler uh, just changes the polarization in an artificial way, in a random way, which means that the device under test is exposed to many different polarization states, and uh, I would say 
it is exposed to basically every state which you have on the Poincaré sphere. As a result, you see power variations on the output side, and um, um, by by uh, taking the minimum and the maximum uh, uh, power level um, and, and taking the ratio, uh, you get the uh, uh, you get the PDL value of that uh, component of the device under test. Uh, this method, as I mentioned, is broadly used in industry. It has been used for a very long time because it has significant advantages. For example, it is a very simple setup. It uh, can easily be implemented at various wavelengths uh, because there are um, not so many uh, requirements on, on all these components. And um, it also has been proven that it can be very accurate. On the other hand, um, there are severe shortcomings, and uh, one of the uh, most important shortcomings is that the, this method is rather slow. Um, it is slow because you have to wait at every wavelength that the uh, that the uh, Poincaré sphere uh, is more or less covered by all the polarizations. That means you typically use a fixed laser or you use a lambda stepped laser, a laser which is stepped through the wavelength range. You cannot really use a continuously tuning laser because then you do not have enough polarization information at every wavelength. For that reason, um, highly resolved spectral measurements are basically not practical. Uh, it just takes too long time stepping through the wavelength range. And um, what you also should be aware of is that the uh, uh, scrambler, uh, which uh, you use for generating the various polarization states, um, generates um, insertion loss variations. And um, these insertion loss variations, they are included in the measurement results. So um, if the scrambler has high variations, that compromises your accuracy. And uh, in order to, to move to a practical way to measure um, broadband components as you have them in WDM systems, um, the Müller matrix method was invented um, several years ago. And uh, this method basically um, uses a different approach. So this met method considers um, that you gener <coughs> generate a number of states of polarization, and the number is typically four. And um, uh, by generating these four polarizations, you, you quickly sweep through the wavelength range with the source on the launching side. And that source, therefore, can be, for example, a tunable laser. So you take for the four different states the, uh, the uh, power traces uh, on the output side. And afterwards, you do the calculation using the um, Muller matrix method um, to obtain the PDL. This method uh, is also broadly used. It is, uh, um, it is proven that it is fast, so you can operate the laser in a continuous way. And um, also, um, therefore, uh, it is practical to really make highly spectrally resolved measurements. Um, there are also here severe shortcomings. And uh, one shortcoming is, for example, that uh, the Hubble measurement is highly susceptible uh, to vibrations and drift of the fibers in the DUT. So if there, if there are any changes of conditions, any drift in between these four sweeps, um, then um, that influences heavily the measurement result. The same is true if the laser um, is not repeatable regarding power and wavelength. So the laser really has to have the very same power, the very same wavelength with every sweep. If there are, dif if there are differences, then um, this also has an immediate um, degradation of the uh, result as a consequence. And um, of course, these um, shortcomings, um, they um, lead to the point that there is a need for a better solution. And uh, actually, I would like to introduce the uh, single sweep PDL method. And uh, this method uses, uh, works in a slightly different way. So, so this method um, collects all the measurement data in a single wavelength sweep of the laser. 
So we do one sweep and we collect, collect all the data we need to do the PDL calculation. That is done um, by, <clears throat> by the following, as I explained here in the following uh, bullet point. While sweeping the polarization, while sweeping the laser, the polarization is switched periodically within a set of states of polarization. So we sweep the laser across the C or the C and the L band, for example, and very quickly we switch with this uh, polarization synthesizer um, to, an, uh, to a set of polarizations. This polarization, polarization synthesizer contains a lithium niobate polarization controller and therefore can switch with, with very high speed to the various states. On the receiver side, um, we are using the uh, uh, new Agilent multiport power meter. This is a new power meter which contains um, a proprietary design uh, so that we can cover a dynamic range of 60 dB without uh, doing any gain switching inside that unit. This one in combination with the high sampling rate of the power meter allows us to, to capture all information which uh, is generated within this single sweep of the laser. The measurement results are then uh, uh, analyzed in the computer and uh, provided uh, to the user. Uh, this uh, method um, has a number of uh, advantages and uh, so this method is really fast. So we talk here about measurement times in the area of uh, seconds and not of minutes. Um, uh, in particular also, this measurement here is robust against uh, fiber or DOT movements because the, the measurements which are at the end correlated to be one PDL value, these measurements, they are taken within a few milliseconds or even less than a millisecond, so there is not much time for movement and drift. And um, also the uh, issue of uh, um, of power and wavelength drift of the laser has been eliminated because we only have one sweep and therefore we do not need to be careful to have a repeatable behavior between multiple sweeps of the laser. As we will see later on, um, this provides us with the capability to have a dynamic range of about 60 dB in a single sweep of the laser. Looking at this method, um, we um, see that there are a number of uh, benefits. It's uh, obvious that uh, this high measurement speed um, is of a significant advantage because this just provides us throughput. And uh, typically, um, there are measurement times uh, around 10 to 20 seconds for 40 channels for the C and the L band uh, of a component. The precise numbers, of course, they depend on various uh, uh, details and that includes, for example, the processing speed of the uh, laptop computer, of the computer which is involved. The uh, uh, high dynamic range of the power meter that um, has a number of advantages and uh, one of the advantages is that uh, the minimum noise uh, which is uh, here contributed eliminates the necessity for average, averaging multiple measurements. So you just do one measurement and that's it. And um, the robustness um, just means that you do not need to consider uh, uh, drift, vibration, and so on uh, in your, in your uh, uh, measurement results. Um, so you, have, you can have high confidence in the, in the measurements, uh, high reliability, you have maximum yield when uh, testing your components. Um, this is a, is a multi-channel measurement setup and uh, you can, uh, you can uh, scale the channel number by multiples of, uh, of four um, and, and this can be done up to several hundreds of channels. And um, so you can scale it really to the number whichever you like. And um, as we will see very soon, uh, we have a very high density of channels. Um, so we have uh, 16 channels in a one unit rack height. 
here uh, we see one typical implementation of a system. Um, so on the top of this uh, instrument uh, pile, we see the multiport power meter with eight fibers connected. Um, the instrument in the middle, uh, that is the uh, uh, polarization synthesizer, which uh, switches quickly between the polarization states. And on the bottom, we see Atulens compact tunable laser. It's a compact laser which can sweep continuously across the sea, <coughs> across the sea and the element. Um, all this uh, is controlled by the uh, by the computer, and the computer is running uh, Atulens new uh, software package uh, that is the uh, N77. Uh, 00A photonic application suite. And uh, this uh, package, uh, as we will see later on, supports you in doing all these measurements. The, the compact laser can also be uh, exchanged by, by, uh, by Atulens uh, 81600B series of lasers, which provides uh, higher performance and uh, uh, at the end uh, might provide uh, better uh, signal quality in measurement quality in some, uh, in some uh, measurement applications. Here we see a, 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 an implementation of a 40-channel uh, system. So we have here on the table a multiplexer, deep multiplexer with 40 channels, and um, we have five multiport power meters here on one pile, and uh, these five power meters, they uh, allow exactly connecting these 40 uh, channels. We again have here the uh, um, polarization synthesizer and uh, we also have in this case a full-size tunable laser as you see it. When talking about such a large number of connectors, like 40 connectors, um, you probably appreciate that um, the measurement time is only one of the issues which needs to be solved. So one other uh, key issue is the connectivity. If you want to have a good usage of your test system, um, you really need to make sure that the system is, is measuring and not being tied up by connecting the next device under test. And looking at all these connectors, as you see it here as a, at a previous generation measurement system, you can imagine that it takes quite a long time to connect all these fibers, and uh, during that time, the system is not available for measurements. So Atvalent uh, has uh, uh, introduced uh, improvements in this area, and uh, uh, what is really providing a great advantage here is the new snap-on four-channel adapter. Uh, this allows connecting uh, four fibers at once, as you see it here, and uh, that means um, uh, typically uh, you can connect your device under test to this uh, connector adapter at a separate bench. So you just uh, connect your device at a separate bench, um, and whenever the test system is available, you, you carry over uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, DOT with these adapters, and you can uh, snatch on, snap on these uh, adapters in a very short time, much faster as if you were connecting the individual connectors. I would like to uh, demonstrate to you now measurement results. And uh, I have results here which have been obtained uh, on a number of uh, different components. And uh, one component is a 40-channel AWG. And uh, another component is a 16-channel multiplexer, demultiplexer based on thin film filter technology. I have an a drop filter, also thin film. And um, I will demonstrate or show results uh, obtained on a DPSK demodulator. This is a is a insertion loss result uh, which has been obtained on a 40-channel um, uh, AWG, and uh, we see that. Uh, uh, these uh, um, AWG um, channels, they have a no noise floor somewhere uh, or site mode suppression somewhere uh, around uh, 50, 45 to 50 dB. And um, all these 
measurement, all the results which were displayed here on this screen, they have been obtained in a single uh, sweep, as we discussed before. Um, in order to, uh, to have a useful um, evaluation analysis of, these, uh, of all these measurement data, um, we are providing a dense WDM analysis function, and uh, this allows you um, to, to or the, the software provides a number of uh, parameters, uh, um, like uh, you, you get the peak wavelength, uh, uh, and um, also the corresponding ITU wavelength, the ITU wavelength arrow. And uh, so, as you see, there are a number of uh, results uh, provided which are analyzed um, by the software. So that is something you can also just export to other applications and make use of that. Um, on your own. Here in, these, uh, in this graph, you see now 40 channels. There might be cases where you would like to look at one individual channel, and uh, so now here in this case, we look at one channel. And as you see here on the left-hand side, you can uh, select the channels which you would like to see. It's very si simple, very easy. You just select the channels, and uh, um, whichever is of interest to you, you can uh, get it on the screen. Um, you can also look at uh, multiple parameters uh, at the same time, as uh, you can see here. So we have here the, the loss characteristics and, uh, in addition, the PDL characteristics of uh, one of the channels. And um, looking at the PDL characteristic here a bit more in detail, so after zooming in, um, we see here that this particular device uh, has a PDL of a level of about a 0.02 dB, and um, uh, so this uh, measurement system allows you to highly accurately uh, verify the components also for this PDL parameter. And um, I would like to move on and uh, uh, look here at a, a measurement example which has been obtained on a a 16-channel multiplexer, demultiplexer based on thin film. And uh, in this case, uh, you see that uh, this has a slightly higher um, uh, side mode suppression uh, compared to the uh, AWG. So we have here a level of about 60 dB um, uh, noise floor. And um, uh, also in this case, as discussed before, this measurement has been obtained in a single sweep so that um, did not require multiple sweeps at uh, different gain settings. Um, I would like to now uh, look at an at drop filter. And um, as you see here, um, uh, that is just a channel filter. And uh, on the top uh, uh, measurement here, we see the loss. And uh, one important function which uh, I would like to introduce now is um, uh, that is the TETM measurement function. Um, so the, the the loss characteristic that is uh, typically um, the curve, the measurement result which is obtained with unpolarized light. But if you apply polarized light to the filter, um, then the filter may show uh, principal states and. Um, the two principal states are, in this case here, called TE and TM. And the, uh, um, you see that there's a significant wavelength shift when moving from one principal state to the other principal state. Um, and um, uh, this wavelength shift um, is really, at the end, has at the end the result of PDL. So if you look here at the slope, um, you see that uh, the difference between one and the other polarization is significant, and that translates into a high PDL level, as you see here. Then again, of course, at the crossing point, uh, you have minimum PDL, which uh, you see here in, on the PDL curve. Um, we will look at this uh, TETM function a bit later again, because it provides some further important information. This uh, device, uh, we are, uh, which we look at here, uh, that, is the, uh, that is a 50 gigahertz DPSK demodulator. So we see here on um, the top um, measurement curve the loss characteristics as you 
uh, may expect. So that's the characteristic of a Mach Zehnder interferometer. And um, again, let's look first here at the third measurement uh, from the top. Uh, the, these are again the TETM measurement curves, and you see also here in this case that there's a significant shift between the two principal states. And I have to admit that I did select here a measurement at a device uh, which did show this significant shift just to make, uh, make it a bit easier to, to look at this effect and to understand the measurement capability here. So we see that we have here a shift between the principal states and therefore Again, the same behavior here. We have a crossing point between the two curves, and at that point we have minimum PDL. Same at every uh, channel here, uh, moving on. Now, when, uh, when uh, designing DPSK demodulators or when um, uh, verifying the specification of such devices, um, this TETM shift is a very important parameter. So you would like to verify the polarization dependent frequency shift. And um, this is done by this software automatically. So, so for every channel, uh, you see that we have here the wavelength shift um, obtained and uh, displayed. And uh, if you look precisely here, uh, the wavelength shift here is in the order of uh, of 4.4 gigahertz, so which is, as mentioned before, quite a large wavelength shift. And um, again, in this case, also in this case, uh, you can export all these data. So you have here the data um, shown in, uh, in this uh, analysis table on the bottom. And uh, by a very simple click on the icon here, you see the Excel item icon here on the top of the screen. Uh, by a click on this Excel icon, um, you get all the data transferred to Excel and you immediately have it there for further evaluation. You can also um, transfer this data to MATLAB or to other programs, or you can just save it as commerce separated values, for example. In total, now, um, um, I would like to summarize the uh, performance characteristics. Um, this system um, is, uh, has been designed um, to work in, in both windows, the 1.3 window and also the 1.5 window, so the SC and L band. And um, depending on uh, settings, we can achieve wavelength resolutions far better than one picometer. And uh, as we see, as we have seen, the dynamic range in a single sweep is 60 dB, but it can be much larger if we also go for multiple sweeps. The uh, PDL repeatability is uh, typically about 2, 0.02 dB, and uh, we, can, um, we can scale the number of channels uh, in multiples of four, up to hundreds or even further uh, numbers. And um, the uh, measurement time, as we mentioned before, it really depends on the settings, and uh, the typical measurement time is between 10 and 20 seconds for 40 channels across the C-band. All this uh, um, measurement capability is supported by Agilent's new N7700A uh, photonic application suite. This is a new modular software platform which allows fast and easy characterization and analysis of optical components and signals. So currently, there are measurement engines available for multi-channel insertion loss, multi-channel in IL PDL and uh, insertion loss PDL PMD and, and some further things. And um, uh, so this software is um, available for download uh, right now. So you can uh, go to this uh, indicated web page here and uh, download the software and uh, get it running on your com computer immediately. So the full functionality um, of this software package is given during the first 60 days, uh, which are considered a trial evaluation period. Um, what is really interesting about this software is that it supports, of course, current, but also most of Etrian's uh, legacy optical test equipment. So if you have some, some uh, not so new anymore 
um, power meters or so in your lab, you can just download the software and uh, use that for doing uh, these um, uh, me measurements. So the the, um, the this legacy equipment typically can be used uh, for doing multi-channel insertion loss measurements. The uh, multi-channel insertion loss and PDL measurement um, that requires some of the newer uh, capabilities which are included in the multi-port power meter uh, which we discussed and, and so in that case uh, you should have that new multi-port power meter. But um, what I would like to point out is uh, this uh, um, uh, all these functions are available for uh, testing immediately uh, after download and um, after 60 days, uh, you may uh, want to decide if you want to uh, obtain a, a license, um, if you want to do IL and PDL measurement. Um, but if you just want to continue doing multi-channel and surf loss measurements, that continues to be free. So you can just use that software. And um, I would like to uh, show some further uh, capabilities. Uh, of the software, so um, there are a number of application packages available, and um, uh, we discussed just before the insertion loss measurement. That is a free capability. We just provide it, and you can use it. Um, the uh, insertion loss PDL component measurement uh, that uh, contains a number of uh, functions, and um, that includes um, also uh, additional uh, functions like. Uh, uh, report generation and data export to Excel to MATLAB and uh, we have automation interfaces uh, here as, as also mentioned before already. Um, we can do the filter multiplexer analysis um, so that we can identify the ITU channels for example as seen before. We have uh, an application package which covers polarization analysis and control and uh, also some of you may know the Photonic Foundation library already. That uh, library is also now part of this uh, Photonic Application Suite software package. So as you uh, may find, uh, this is a very powerful package and as mentioned, um, feel free to download that from this web page. I would like to uh, briefly talk about automation and uh, uh, that means really integrating uh, the system potentially in the manufacturing environment. Um, so there are uh, various interfaces so that the components of the software can be used on various platforms and uh, um, some examples are shown here. So you have a MATLAB uh, interface, uh, you can just export the data to MATLAB, uh, the same with LabVIEW. Um, you can uh, uh, obtain the data uh, easily in LabVIEW and do your further processing or your link to your uh, 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 database in your manufacturing environment, for example, using LabVIEW. And the same is, applies to Advent V and Visual C++. If you would like to have uh, some more information uh, on these solutions, please uh, feel free to also go to the uh, web page for the Photonic Application Suite. Uh, that is again this, this web page as we discussed before. And uh, if you are interested in some more information about polarization and dispersion solutions, uh, the web page is given here. In conclusion, um, I would like to uh, uh, summarize. Um, uh, we, see, we have seen in this uh, presentation that the new advanced opti optical networks really establish new requirements for test equipment. And um, throughput, floor space, and connectivity are critical, but I, I should say they continue to be critical, so that has been a movement for some time. But what is uh, in particular now of interest is that the high capacity photonic uh, switching networks, they drive the requirements for insertion loss and PDL measurements. And um, Agilent's new uh, photonic application suite has really been set up to support manufacturers of components and models in really efficiently test their components considering these new requirements. 
Um, in addition, um, um, we are supporting the legacy test equipment um, because um, this makes the transition uh, simpler in your lab. Uh, so basically in every lab in the world we see adjuvant photonic test equipment and therefore it should be easy to set up uh, some, some simple measurement using that software and some existing test equipment. Um, also regarding PDL, we have seen that uh, the adjuvant single sweep measurement method um, shows really high speed and high accuracy as well as high robustness so that you have a high reliability of the measurement results. This uh, um, has the benefit that the multi-channel PDL test times have been reduced from what has been several minutes in the past down to a few seconds today. I would like to thank you very much for your attention uh, during this presentation and um, I would be happy to receive questions from you if, uh, there, is, uh, if there are any further uh, uh, open points on your side. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a question, please press the one key on your touchtone telephone. If your question has been answered or you wish to remove yourself from the queue, you may press the pound key. I believe there are a couple of questions in uh, chat. Um, Harold, if you want to, uh, to yeah, ask. Yeah, actually, them Emily, this is true. Um, I sorted some questions out. Um, I think this one is a good one. Um, Ralph, can you comment on PDL measurement with angled connectors? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, you know, it's usually it's uh, uh, of high interest to have really accurate PDL measurements. And um, on the other hand, um, it's also desired uh, to have a re reliability when connecting components, and so you want to be independent of possible uh, dirt uh, uh, on the connectors. And, and so many people like to use angled components, uh, angled connectors. So, but um, there is a very strong compromise if you use an angled connector because uh, such connectors, they themselves exhibit a PDL level of about, about 0.02 dB. So if you have a component uh, with two such connectors in the path, one on the input and one on the output side, um, you have two sources of 0.02 dB of PDL. And as we discussed before, depending on the polarization state of the uh, um, of the component in between, uh, this PDL may add up or that may cancel out. So you have an uncertainty which is going up to 0.04 dB. As a result, I would recommend um, if you are really concerned about PDL, um, you should really um, use either straight connectors or possibly splice your components into the path. If you use angle connectors, uh, then you have to accept this compromise. Okay, thank you for the question. Okay, do we have meanwhile uh, questions from the audio line? I am not showing any questions at this time. Okay, then I go ahead with the next one. The next one is about uh, the wavelength uh, resolution. Um, what kind of wavelength resolution is possible with a single sweep PDL? We, um, uh, it depends on the settings of the system. So uh, if uh, there is interest on high wavelength resolution, we can opt obtain resolution uh, values which are around uh, 0.1 picometer. Uh, so this is a really high um, resolution, gives, gives you lots of data points. And uh, um, if, if that is of interest, uh, then uh, we can go uh, down to that level. Uh, but in, in case you do not need such a high resolution, of course, so there is the possibility to have a lower resolution in order to not not to make the data uh, files too large. Thank you very much for that question. Okay, um, here's one. Okay, uh, I just read it. It's um, is there a length limitation for the device under test? Um, no, there is not 
length limitation. So you can basically use a device with any length. However, um, what you have to be aware of is um, um, the, if you have a very long device, um, like a very long fiber, possibly a fiber link, um, uh, you may run into a limitation of the dynamic range. So as we mentioned, if you want to cover the measurement in a single sweep, you have a limitation of about 60 dB. In case of single mode fiber, this translates into a certain length. But apart from that, there is not really a length limitation. I think this question was about um, the interferometric measurement methods, right? They usually have a length limitation. Yes, there are other methods which do have a length limitation, and, and they are mostly um, uh, usable only for short devices and not for long fibers. Um, okay. Um, Emily, do we still have time for another one? Yes, I think we have time for, for one or two more. If we don't happen to get, get to your question, I remember that Ralph will follow up by email. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, here's one. Can the PDL measurement be done on an amplified link? Um, yes. Uh, in fact, we have done that. We have done uh, PDL measurements on amplified links. Um, however, uh, of course, you need to consider in that case um, that uh, there is a strong dependence on the system behavior. So um, you are, may run into problems if the, uh, uh, for example, if the control loops of the amplifiers are really fast and if you're changing your polarization and the control loops of the amplifier always control out the power variation which is caused due to PDL, then of course you do not get a useful measurement. Um, therefore, you may you may uh, have to um, uh, also uh, play with the uh, with the uh, system you are measuring on. But um, um, we have uh, done measurements in the past, and they have turned out to work very fine. Um, yes, maybe one comment of uh, myself. Actually, you have to really play with the EDFAs normally to turn off um, the automatic switch off when uh, there's no power and these kinds of stuff. Um, so, but yes, we get actually quite good measurements with that. Thank you for watching this Agilent Technologies webcast. For more recorded webcasts, subscribe to our Agilent TM webcast YouTube channel. All of our webcasts are held live. Interact with our Agilent experts in the live Q&A sessions and gain access to Agilent materials. To view our upcoming live webcasts and to sign up for free, go to our website, www.agilent.com slash find slash web underscore seminar.